Hey YouTube, today we're going to be looking at the original design made by Getz and Glock. And what we have here is a Glock 17 chambered in 9mm. And before we go any further, I'm going to show you that this mighty 9mm Glock does not have anything in it. And we are safe to proceed with making this video. So what we have here is a Gen 5 Glock 17 chambered in 9mm and what everybody already knows probably that's watching this video is this is the original design that was released in 1982. This is the gun that got all the polymer frame striker fired pistol craze going. And this, this gun was developed by Gatsing Glock in 1982, and it's, this is the only one that you could get. Now, that was a Generation 1, folks, <clears throat> and this is the fifth generation of these polymer frame Glocks. And they've done various changes, and we're not going to go over all the changes that they have here. We'll do a video one day on all the different changes for the different generations, but this one here... You look at it real close is a gen 5 glock 17 it does not have the front serrations that most people think of when they think of a generation 5 because this is one of the early ones that was released now the the changes made in the generation 5s was it, they got rid of the finger grooves on the front of it they still have the interchangeable back strap so you can make it any size that you want for whatever size hands you want has an ambidextrous um, slide stop on top here. It has a single pin that holds in the fire control group. Um, it has the little magwell thing here on the bottom, little flared type of magwell, and it has a little hole here that a lot of people complain about for ripping out magazines right here. And a lot of people complain about this little hole on the front of the Generation 5s. And I think they actually changed it <clears throat> later on with the Generation 5s. Because a lot of the 9mm people that don't like to shoot a lot. But like to talk about how their 9mm are awesome. Got their little fingers pinched when they were trying to rip the magazines out. <laughs> this, <laughs> this one here has it on here folks. But this gun was developed in 1982. And it was a, a absolutely earth-changing design. Because of this gun is why all these polymer frame guns exist today. Made out of polymer, steel slide on top, and Glock was known for the barrel tipping up in the front. And it looks kind of goofy when it's open. But man, these are the most reliable pistols on the earth, folks. And there is none more reliable. They call it Glock Perfection, and they call it that for a reason. If it wasn't for this gun, you wouldn't have any of these crazy guns that they have come out today. I think a lot of their patents have run out, and that's why these companies are allowed to produce these striker fired guns. But Gatson Glock was not even in the firearms. He had no experience with them. He, I think he was a plastic molding company. And he started making this firearm, prototyped it. It came out in the early 80s, and boy, was it successful. I think every single person has either owned one of these or, at the very least, fired one of these if you're in the firearms. One of the complaints about Glocks for a lot of people is the ergonomics of it. The angle, the grip angle on them. I don't really seem to have too much problem holding this gun and shooting it. I think it's a very natural feeling gun but a lot of people don't like the grip angle clocks are one of them things that you either love them or you hate them and i seem to like them because i have a bunch of them but <laughs> that don't mean because i think that way that everybody's going to think that way so some of the changes they've made over the years they've made this uh, mag release a little bit bigger they put like a little crown barrel on them they call it a i can't remember what it is a marksman's barrel or something and i don't i don't know that it makes any difference one of the things that i don't like personally about glocks is these sights on them i think they're awesome you can pick them up if you're using them at a range very well there's a sight picture on it but they are made out of plastic folks and 
if you were using this gun in any kind of battle or any kind of um, stress situation and you injured your hand and had to use this like on a countertop or a table or something like that, I could see how this sight could easily break off. But that's just me, but the sights are very serviceable. Glocks have the same, the same kind of trigger that they all have. They're a little spongy. This one actually has a pretty nice one for a Glock and it breaks right there. And then your reset's gonna be right there. Pretty tactile, pretty pretty nice little, little trigger break in Glock terms. But this is the one that got it started. This is the one that got everything started, folks. And I did not realize I had not showed a full-size Glock 17 on here yet. Maybe we'll do a frame size video one day and maybe we'll talk about the generations one day but this is a nine millimeter this gun holds let me see here it holds 17 in the magazine and one in the chamber so essentially if you're carrying this gun around or using it for home defense you have 18 rounds of nine millimeter at your disposal that's a lot of ammo that's one of the things that made these things popular because they were a double stack made out of polymer Framed and they're really light and they're really reliable. I mean these things you can throw them in mud You can do whatever you want. They're like the AK of the of the pistol world But a lot of people start um, Having the baits over these finger grooves on the front and the generation 5 they removed the finger grooves and I think there's whole entire forums of people that talk about whether Glock should use finger grooves or not. I've never understood it. But I do like them, folks. I do. It is what it is. They're not great looking guns. They're just blocky looking blocks of steel. But they are very reliable. And they do what they're supposed to. They always work. They always go bang. Seems like you can feed any kind of ammo through them. You are not supposed to put lead ammo in it because of the rifling in the barrel. Apparently, the rifling will clog up if you use lead bullets in it. But I don't. I don't use a shoot lead bullets in guns. I just use um, jacketed, copper plated bullets on them. So I never have a problem with them. And I clean my weapons every single time that they take them to the range or they've been fired. A lot of these you don't necessarily have to. These things are, are so reliable and they have such a reputation of working in almost any kind of situation that it's not that important. But I just like to have clean stuff, folks. So I always keep my stuff clean and I know it will operate when it needs to. But anyway, folks, if you have any questions on this Glock 17 Gen 5 with no front finger grooves on it, Feel free to ask. I'm not a Glock expert. I just have a bunch of them. I know enough to be dangerous and I will try my best to answer your questions. And if I don't know the answer, as always, I will find the answer for you. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching my video today and you folks have a great day.